question number 18 is going to involve uh, laws of using laws of exponents. And one of the things that I like you to know when you're dealing with the law of exponent problems is laws of exponents are kind of fun if you just treat them sort of as patterns. Every law of exponents is just a pattern that you need to recognize to use in a particular problem. Another thing that's an important thing to know is, and in general this pertains throughout any other math course you go into, when you're done with a problem involving exponent laws, in general you should not leave zero exponents and you should not leave negative exponents in your final answer. It's not considered to be in its most simplest terms. So let's look at the paper. Let's look at the problem involved here. All right, here we go. Question number um, 18 on your review. X to the negative fourth, Y to the eighth, the entire quantity raised to the third power. Now, the X and the Y, the bases, are going to remain stable. The exponent's going to change. When I have a power on the inside and I have a power on the outside, if you'll recall, the pattern in the law of exponents that you're going to pick will tell me to multiply these two numbers together to get the new power. So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And analogously, 8 times 3 is 24. So, so far, just by remembering that little pattern, we're to this point. Now, what we need to do next is to remember what I said earlier in the video, and that is this. Even if the directions don't say, in general, most math teachers are going to assume that you will not leave a negative exponent in your final answer. So, the correct way to write this, leave y to the 24th on the top, and in the denominator you will end up with x to the 12th. And this would be our final answer to the problem. Kind of a really neat way of saying it. Remember, negative exponents actually take reciprocals. But sometimes I like to use little mnemonic devices too. If you see a negative exponent like this basically in the numerator and you're dropping it down to the denominator and making the exponent positive, when you cross the line, you change the sign. Okay, let me say that one more time. When you cross the line, you change the sign and that pertains to negative exponents.